A superior trunk block is designed to block the territory of the C56 brachial plexus roots and is an alternative to the interscaling block with similar clinical indications and applications. Position the patient by turning the head to the contralateral side. You can stand either at the head of the patient or on the ipsilateral side to be blocked. If you're right-handed, performing a right-sided block and you prefer to use your dominant hand for needling, stand closer towards the head of the patient at a slight diagonal across the patient's body. Hold the probe with your left hand and use an along needle approach with your right hand, which will also help with easier in-plane needle beam alignment. Start by placing the probe in the supraclavicular fossa and identifying the subclavian artery. The brachial plexus will be lateral to it. Perform a survey scan by sliding the probe along the course of the brachial plexus up towards the head and back down again. The key things to identify apart from the superior trunk are to look for suprascapular and transcervical arteries that cross through or over the brachial plexus. A plane that avoids these arteries can usually be selected. The optimal plane for needle insertion is one where there are no arteries in the planned needle trajectory, but also where the superior trunk is compact, and finally, where the suprascapular nerve is still part of the superior trunk. The suprascapular nerve is always the most lateral and superficial hypoechoic circle attached to the superior trunk. More distally, it will branch off to run laterally and posteriorly under omohyoid muscle to supply the shoulder joint. And its exact takeoff point varies from person to person. So it's essential to identify it and to make sure that it is still part of the superior trunk at the level you choose to target. Place the superior trunk in the middle of the screen, closer to the lateral edge, so that your needle path is not longer than it needs to be. A long needle path through tissues will trap the needle shaft and hamper your ability to manipulate the needle tip. Insert the needle under direct vision, close to the probe at a 45 degree steep angle to make a clean puncture through the tough skin layer. Once through the skin and in subcutaneous tissue, flatten out and visualize your needle with appropriate sliding probe micro movements. Once under the fascia, flatten the needle again Withdraw slightly if needed to come back out of the muscle, but stay under the fascia. Travel towards the lateral corner of the superior trunk, nudge up gently against it, and start to hydrodissect with half mil boluses of local anesthetic. As the space opens up, advance the needle into the safe zones of fluid. Use the injectate to displace the plexus and create a safe path for your needle tip to follow. Inject larger volumes of fluid once you can see it spreading around and outlining the superior trunk. Note that a plane may open up below or above the superior trunk. Circumferential spread is not critical to success and I wouldn't engage in aggressive needling to achieve it. Instead, perform a survey scan during injection to assess spread and determine if it's really needed. Withdraw the needle out of the superficial cervical fascia and before withdrawing from the skin, complement the superior trunk block with a block of the supraclavicular nerves. The supraclavicular nerves are the inferior branches of the superficial cervical plexus. They innervate not only the skin over the cape of the shoulder, but also the clavicle itself and the acromioclavicular joint. It's therefore a very important block in shoulder and clavicle surgery. I prefer to target these nerves rather than the superficial cervical plexus itself to avoid giving the patient a numb jaw. At more cranial levels, the nerves lie under the superficial cervical fascia but always superficial to the deep investing cervical fascia. More cordially at the level of the superior trunk, they gradually rise to the surface and eventually lie above the superficial cervical fascia in the subcutaneous tissues. If they cannot be seen, just infiltrate local anesthetic in this subcutaneous layer over middle scalene muscle. Five to eight milliliters of local anesthetic in this location is sufficient and the nerves often become visible with fluid injection.